good morning everyone uh, i am dr neeraj kumar working as an assistant professor in the department of civil engineering at central university of haryana mahindragarh uh, the today's topic for presentation is dynamic site city interaction of structures in urban environment so uh, there are three words which i think uh, you might be noticing and you must be hurting first time like uh, uh, site city interactions one is dynamic and third is urban environment so before starting uh, let me start with the urban environment what is urban environment mean uh, urban environment means uh, if we look at the cities we have multiple structures multiple structures means like buildings are there hospitals are there residential buildings flats uh, even we can see uh, fly overs metros Uh, even uh, underground metros, pipelines. So these come under the urban environment. If we look at the uh, areas like forest, we don't have these structures like uh, structures like concrete structures, material, uh, our steel structures, etc. Now, uh, second is this site city interaction. This site city site means a location, a particular area. Uh, if we talk, uh, you might be heard about the word soil structure interaction. in soil structure interaction what is there a uh, single structure is there and the underlying soil of about uh, 100 meter but this site refers to a location uh, having a larger or a, a larger dimension like about 2 uh, to 3 km 4 to 5 km 10 km that come under the site and city uh, as you all know what is city a city is the a group of multiple structures this this urban environments that we used to call as city so from this soil structure interaction where we used to interact a single structure with the underlying soil here we are going to uh, simulate a whole site having multiple structures which is generally named as a city and their interactions and uh, third was is dynamic uh, in this dynamic generally refers where the force is uh, that that is changing with respect to time as we all know that uh, in our btec bachelors and uh, in masters even we have what about the when we apply some load there are certain deflection and that is proportional to their young modulus so here that force is a constant it's it is not changing at all but in dynamic what is there that the, that force is changing with respect to time it is not a constant uh, up to the uh, analysis we are doing so this come under the dynamic so Let's starting with this. Let's come to an introduction. Why we require this type of uh, this side city interaction with the dynamic and so what is that need? So let me uh, start with an uh, Michoacan earthquake. Uh, it is generally known as a Mexico earthquake, and the reason is that uh, uh, it resulted in the thousand, ten thousand lives lost. Hello. Doctor Neera, so I think your slides are not changing. It is not changing. Yeah. is it visible yes, yes. or not okay let me share with this now is it visible yes, yes. okay so why we used to call it as a mexico earthquake or michoacan earthquake the reason is that about 10000 life lost and about 1000 construction are totally collapsed and important thing to notice is that that this earthquake has occurred about 400 km away from this mexico city 400 km uh, we can assume that uh, if we are sitting in the delhi that the earthquake has occurred somewhere in uh, afghanistan or in pakistan border somewhere and the damages in which the thousand construction destroyed or totally collapsed is in delhi so you can estimate that uh, you can see that the earthquake has occurred somewhere else at the 400 km and the destruction is occurring at here and it has in a magnitude of 8.1 just now we come to an another earthquake Uh, which also arises that uh, why something is happening mysteriously that is a spitka earthquake in 1989 and is one thing which we have seen that in this we have seen one second in this we see that uh, magnitude of having a 6.8 only and there are two cities one is leknin and other is lirovakan and lirovakan city which is just 25 kilometers away from that uh, epicenter has a lesser damage than the leknin city which is further that is about 32 kilometer 
the reason behind that uh, that uh, uh, difference in the damages is their locations this lidokan city is located on some rock some mountain area and this laknan city is located at some alluvial soil alluvial soils uh, we can say alluvial basin like a soft sediment area so this have also created some why matlab we generally used to say that if an earthquake is occurred at some place like an earthquake occurred at hamirpur so it will be more dangerous to the city than the the cities which are located for the like haridwar and other things so we used to say that uh, that the damages will be more where an earthquake is occurred but in this it is something different and similarly we have seen such scenarios in the other earthquakes also like in san francisco of 1956 nigata in 1964 Similarly, Mexico, 1985 and 89, both Kobe, 1995, Bhuj, 2001, and recently uh, we have seen in Nepal also in 2015. So similar trends are observed. That at certain location the damages are more, at certain location the damages are less. So even this Turkey, Turkey ago which recently occurred, in this also a uh, few buildings are totally collapsed and few buildings are just uh, standing without any much damages. So these things arises that. there is something is going on with this soil and structure that it is going affecting the response of a building so from this all these past earthquake studies we come to an point that site conditions is also very important in determining the damages in the building rather than the structure features on the structure features like we are making our cc building with column beam and all these things except that if the if the construction type is same throughout the city even then we see the certain buildings are damaging certain are not that may be some site conditions effect that are going to uh, this affect the uh, building responses Sim uh, second point if we talk about this damages like in mexico city we are talking about the mexico city earthquake mexico earthquake because we used to say that whenever an earthquake occur it is mainly uh, damaging in both uh, economic human loss destruction of the city in the cities only not not to the uh, forest if an earthquake occurred in something like uh, in forest then we never say that uh, an earthquake occur in forest we we named after it somewhere the nearby city where the their losses are there so these two points we came to know um, from this uh, uh, last studies so now it one question arises that uh, okay some buildings are getting damages some are not damaging is this buildings are going also affecting that response of ground can building can alter or change the response of ground motion this group of structures can influence the seismic ground motions one concern is also arises from this study so <clears throat> that soil basin matlab means that uh, soft soil yeah sediments in this certain uh, phenomena occurs like one is impedance contrast other is resonance another is base bed foxing last is basement edge and new surface wave what is this uh, impedance contrast uh, means that uh, uh, soil is there having certain density and that uh, uh, we used to say soft sediment having certain density the shear wave velocity is also different in the rock and also changes in the soft soil so there may be a some changes in that that contrast is there another is resonance resonance refers to a matching of frequencies matching of frequencies of the building with the soft soil which resulting in the uh, amplification of that ground motion so this is general mode the resonance one is basement foxing all the waves which are coming towards the earth surface get focused to at a point that result in destruction and another is basement edge due surface waves these are the surface waves as we all know that the surface waves are more damaging than this body waves uh might uh, i think uh, dr maninder all the persons are faculties or they are students also sir both faculty as well as okay so uh, might be students might be knowing that uh, uh, in earthquake there are uh, two types of waves we generally classify one is body wave another is surface wave body waves are those waves which comes from the surface uh, which come from the that uh, focus to the surface and after that by interaction this body wave with the surface all the surface heterogeneities the surface wave induces surface wave generates so these are generally known as the surface waves and the waves that are coming from the focus to the surface are known as body waves now uh, in mexico 
what we observed there is a increase in the uh, this stone ground motion and the time duration of that uh, shaking has increased and this may be due to the interaction between the urban structures that has uh, having a peace they used to go to this uh, himalayas and there also they are getting all the type of facilities even they can find the bridges they can find the hotels everything is there so this also resulting in that buildings are uh, the people are making the buildings the constructions at the places which are vulnerable for the earthquake for the damages this is also going to going uh, happening right now so now we come to a basic Uh, that might be helpful for the students like uh, what is soil structure interaction so this uh, soil structure interaction as a side we used to say it's a combined effect of both kinematic soil structure interaction and the inertial soil structure interaction on a global scale what is this kinematic and what is this inertial so kinematic mean if we if we generally take these the soil structure interaction they are affected by certain phenomenons like uh, stiffness of soil dynamic characteristic of the soil itself like uh, what are this dynamic character like natural period of that building second is damping factor how it is going to damp in damping generally known as the loss of energy per cycle uh, everything like uh, if we sway a uh, some uh, pendulum then after some time it going to rest so per cycle it is losing some energy that is generally known as the damping and also the stiffness and the mass of the structure they also play an important now we come to our this kinematic interaction so this kinematic interaction means uh, when we consider only the stiffness of a building like in this foundation we are considering so the ma uh, there are you can see a b c d four diagrams are there they are taken from the data 2010 and what are they saying that if we are making some raft foundation at the top so it is going to hamper or that uh, restrict the vertical movement of the ground motion as we see in the egg due to the flexibility of this mat, uh, this rough foundation second if we look at the for the vertical propagating wave as we have seen the b so what are they are going to do they are going to uh, confined due to this embedded foundation number three uh, the axial stiffness of the foundation slab is also prevented due to the incoherent ground motion produced below the foundation and at last we can see that is also resulted in this uh, uh, torsion or the rocking movement of this if the wavelength matches with that of uh, depth of the this uh, foundation if they are matching so what they are used to do they are used to make that uh, uh, torsion motion of this foundation so kinematic interaction includes both uh, torsion modes of vibration and uh, when they are uh, subjected to the vertical vibration as wave of the wavelength equal to the depth of the embedment so it is already clear now we come to the kinematic interaction what used to do it is given by the grammar in which we has consider if we want to do just kinematic soil structure interaction we have to take our soil having mass and the building massless you have to consider the stiffness of the building but you have to avoid the mass of that building so the deformation is caused by the kinematic interaction can be computed assuming the structure and the foundation is a stiffness but no mass so an equation is also given by the kramer in uh, 1996 similarly if we talk about uh, this uh, inertial interaction it is opposite to that in this we used to consider mass and the stiffness of the building and for the soil we used to consider massless only stiffness is considered uh, in simple terms we can say that uh, inertial means uh, the response of a building in uh, due to its own weight for example uh, if we see some building which is tilting it is going to move down because of its gravity its own weight it it is something like follow this our newton's law that something is in motion to remain in motion if we try to stop it we have to exert some extra pressure similarly a 
uh, board in which is in rest if we apply uh, it will be remain in rest or oppose the motion till that exceed its uh, uh, that resistance capacity so this is generally known as a uh, uh, inertial uh, side shift interaction effects so it is purely caused by the inertia forces generated due to the structure due to the movement of the mass of the structure during vibration so the inertia load applied to the structure lead to the overturning moment at a transfer shear so this interaction is given note that the right hand of the equation shows the inertia loading of the structure foundation system which depend upon base motion and the foundation input motion in group kinematic interaction effect only so now we come after understanding somewhat of ssi now we come to the side effects as i have told you there are certain like impedance contrast is there damping is there resonance is there basement topography effects are there trapping of waves are there so you can see a figure simple figure a building which is located on the bedrock has in uh, that amplitude isn't increasing but a building which is located on this base in a small basin has in a higher amplitude you can see uh, uh, this that uh, the amplitude has increases uh, apparently compared to this motion which is having a less amplitude so the reasons are number one impedance contrast as i told you that depend upon the density and the velocity it can be the density and velocity of the rock divided by the density and velocity of the soil and this happen because when a wave travel from uh, higher or dense medium to the lower dense medium so what happen to maintain that energy flux that increases its uh, amplitude so second is dinner, uh, damping damping is generally the energy loss due to its imperfect elastic property the loss per unit cycle is a known as damping now uh, third is the resonance resonance i have said earlier that when the frequency of the incident rays matches with that fundamental frequency of soil layer then the resonance it's very simple what we have to find out we have to find out a shear wave shear wave we can find out by many as tools which are available even some equations are derived uh, there are certain relation with that n value we can find out the vs even except that there are multiple like msw is there tomino is there many instrument are there we can uh, find out the shear wave velocity of the underlying soil layer and if we know that the, that this is the shear wave velocity and up to this depth there is a soil after that there is a hard rock so you can simply take the formula vs by 4h and determine its fundamental mode of frequency so this we used to generally do in case of finding the resonance of that uh, that uh, uh, matching of that frequencies of the soil and that of uh, buildings now next is trapping of waves uh, it happen when uh, when a wave enter into the soft soil and it try to move out from the soil uh, soft soil to the rock so what what happen when the angle is greater than this critical angle it get trapped between the soft sediment and underlying bedrock and last is basement topography a uh, basement topography means foxing and defoxing it depend upon this our this angle of incidence you might be aware that uh, in uh, 12th or 10th class we used to have two type of lenses uh, one is concave one is convex similarly things happen in uh, in the um, basement where uh, the hard rock is there and certain waves get uh, uh, focused at a particular location which increases its uh, amplitude and in case of uh, convex it goes dispersed and that ground motion decreases same thing used to happen with this type of waves now uh, we come to certain literature so this literature we are going to start with ssi where simple some test has been performed and later they come to sci importance for for example first we start with the jennings in 1972 what he do he do for the inertial uh, side sit interaction we used to say inertial soil structure interaction what is there a library is there which is used to know as millikan library and uh, they try to shake it and record the vibration that are coming from that building and they have recorded that motion up to a distance of 10 km that what are the motion that are coming out from the facade particular building and in later in 1970 kinematic soil structure interaction in which they have caused the diffraction of incident waves 
and largely affect the seismic response of a building, particularly massive and tall buildings located on soft soils. Later, Virgin and Bard they carried out a uh, numerical experiment uh, to study the diffraction pattern of the surface wave uh, while interacting with the buildings, considering only two dimensions. Stewart in 1999 is also promoted an experiment and uh, what he did, he find out the building and the foundation characteristics and include this inertial soil structure interaction that can play an important role in uh, modifying the SSI responses. Guggen ATL, he has done this Volvi experiment at the Volvi, uh, Volvi Eurostat sites considering a small scale vibrating structures. Now, uh, later, this uh, effect of buildings, multiple buildings, that has been started by Tosaga and Vergin in 2010. Mm, I, from this, I generally want to say that uh, we have started from soil structure only. And later, if we see in 2001, 2003, 2008, 2002, 2006, we came to a site-city interaction where we are uh, not considering a single structure, where we are considering a multiple structure and how they are going to interact with each other, how they are going to affect the soil responses, how they are collectively going to diffract or reflect or some something they are going to do with the seismic waves. So in 2008, this Guggen also done with the World Trade Center that uh, you might be knowing uh, World Trade Center that uh, that uh, two planes hit that uh, building and uh, what they did, they have many recorders are located at that place and they uh, this is known as a lament network and they analyze that, that due to some shaking or something vibration in a building, how the waves are generated, how their waves are coming from that building. Similarly, from the Mexico, this Garcia and Soto done for the Mexico earthquake in 2002 by using the HV special ratios. And similarly, CAM also done for the 2D homogeneous cities, height of the building interaction. Except that Google 2008, many, many studies has been done after 2000. Uh, Google, I think, has done for the France city also, for nice city. In France, there is a city that is nice city. He's also taken some uh, plane is there like x y plane and what he did he placed that buildings which are there they place that uh, uh, soil the underlying basin over there and uh, using that uh, responses like uh, s wave response or some uh, recur wave right he also studied that how these buildings going to fit now all the works done they are generally done in the 2d but in realistic the things are in 3d the 2D is nothing, uh, 2D sort of drawings may we can see, but uh, in reality, all the things are in 3D. So what is the relation we found in 2D and 3D simulation? 3D is, I think uh, it is more sophisticated, more powerful numerical models are required and largely large computation time. I have done some 3D simulation and for a small scale in which I have done just uh, 25 buildings, nine buildings within small, uh, 150 by 150 or 300 by 300 meter uh, basing it required me three days and ram up to 64 gb is required and it is possible because i was there at that iit Roorkee. in other institute it is still not possible to simulate so much responses so uh, in 2d models uh, the geometrical expansion is only in 2D, where in reality it is in 3D. Uh, this uh, geometrical expansion means like uh, if we see a bulb, uh, as we go near to it, it's, it's, uh, it is radiating energy and as we go further, we get a small amount. So in reality it is in 3D, but if we have a 2D model, only the geometric expansion will be only in 2D. Realistic, we are not going to find out. So second problem is that with that. Now second is uh, this phone also induces a strong directivity in the radiative and it is not accounted in 2D. And the city may be anything between full periodic city with an identical buildings are completed regularly out of different buildings is not possible. Because if we see a building, we generally used to take it as regular buildings, having height this, width this, but in reality, it can have a different width, different height, different length. This is possible, which is not possible in 2D. But in reality, it is in such heterogeneous cities are there. So now we come to a real site-city interaction. So 
this is somewhat work i have done uh, during my phd and right now i am also trying to uh, move further with this so what is this site sit interaction how we can define this this site sit interaction is it is a very complex phenomena and between the closely spaced structure that can interact with us, each other with the underlying basin and finally they are going to alter the seismic response of both free field and that of structure this is generally known as a site sit interaction and uh, when we talking about urban environment so urban environment means uh, the locations which are located in this urban areas so what do we see in urban areas that uh, we have certain uh, which is used to say vulnerable sites what are these vulnerable sites like uh, due to this rapid urbanization and those increase in population people are start making it that if we see a dried pond is there you might be knowing in in your cities the person which are living in cities that once about 25 years or 50 years ago there was certain nala some some uh, used to say uh, pond is there some lake is there what did the people did people did what is first it become a garbage area then once a people a constructor will come a one developer will come he will what he did he will bring the soil from somewhere else put there and make the uh, five story 10 story 20 story buildings it is generally we see in delhi that uh, before that uh, there used to be some irrigation uh, canals were there some nalas were there some ponds were there so what the people did people just first uh, uh, put some soil over there some uh, garbage and then make some building over there but these are very very uh, vulnerable sites because they can act as a 2d or 3d base in during an earthquake and this 2d and 3d basins are responsible for generating surface waves also so people don't know that uh, something if an earthquake has occurred the damages will take place there so with this uh, increase in it is paramount importance uh, to, uh, to analyze the seismic response of structure of a city situated in such sites with more holistic approaches with examining the various aspects of site city interaction the complex interaction phenomena of sites as well as with the global scale having a pragmatic vision this is what we required right now so first thing this type of simulations can't be done with any software because there are so complexities that it can't be done so what we did we have uh, uh, develop our own software uh, using this fourth order accurate staggered grid viscoelastic 3d finite difference method and it is developed by narayan and seher uh, one of my senior and uh, he what he did he did for the 3d simulations and we did the responses over the 3d site sit training machine using this a uh, program only in the four track so what we did we considered three type of basin uh, in nature it can be of uh, many dimension many size but if we are studying something we have to start with a very common thing like uh, we are developing certain theory which is not there uh, uh, in the in, we are just trying to get ki how they are going to respond so what we did we have taken these three simple geometries one is this uh, spherical elliptical shape another is rectangular or we can say rectangular to be a more uh, square type third is trapezoid so this three type we have taken the basin soil and what we did we have placed the uh, response decoders at both the direction in the north south and east west for both in both the dimension we have considered now we have taken uh, s wave and uh, try to study the response in this we have considered uh, five type of basin having fixed depth like 51 meter you can see in the table that it is there that uh, we have considered the depth to be 51 meter only and the width width we have considered to be 153 to 351 we are changed the width and similarly by h by w ratio we can find out the different basin shape ratios and uh, we what we did we find out its uh, fundamental frequency using that formula vs by 4h if we know the vs and uh, then we find out the amplification which is 5.59 and we record the responses at the center of this basin and develop formulas because the formula which is given by vs by 4h it is fixed fixed for uh, basin 
which is only one dimensional but here the the basins are two dimensional two dimensional means uh, it has a certain width so that's why we have developed certain formulas also for different shapes like this uh, uh, fundamental frequency for elliptical basin for uh, rectangular basin for uh, trapezoidal basin so these are the formula which is given uh, here like uh, this is 1D fundamental frequency for both and these are the formulas we can use using their H by W ratio to find out the, what are the fundamental frequency of that particular basin. Uh, one question arises why it is important to find out the fundamental frequency of this basin. So reason is that that we are going to make certain building over these poems because we can't stop. We have that, that piece of land is very costly. And we have to use that piece because it is located somewhere in the metro cities. We can't just let it go that let there is a two hectare, two, three hectare places there, which is a lake 25 years ago, 30 years ago. We have to use that land. We have to develop that land. So what we did, we have to make. But we have to make the construction such a way that it is not uh, devastating, it is not uh, dangerous, it is not vulnerable. So what we do, we have to find out that what is the fundamental frequency of that basin, that lake. So we will determine using these formulas and then these are the responses in the fundamental frequency. You can see that that first peak determine the fundamental frequency, higher peak and then is the second peak is there the second peak denotes the second mode of vibration similarly for each basin like electrical rectangular trapezoidal for north south area and east west area we have find out and we find out the fundamental frequency of each basin using these empirical relations now we also compare this uh, uh, response of each like uh, here we can see it is a 153 meter basin the 3D response and 2D response for SH wave, for ES wave, uh, for east west component. Similarly, for north south component, we have computed with the SV wave for the 2D. So the comparison has been done. And we find out that the amplification, like uh, uh, I mean to say, up to now, up to 2000 or up to 2010, even, people have done responses of side seat interaction in 2D only. 3D is not possible due to that uh, high computational power, that time limitations and many. But can we develop certain relationship that if we I only do 2D and I can get approximately that what will be the real scenario in 3D. So these relations has been done using uh, we have computed 3D responses, 2D responses and then compare them. So what I found that uh, that the amplification of this uh, fundamental frequency is 2.5 times larger, larger than SH wave response and two times larger than the SV response. Like if, we, if I got certain response, then it will be about 2.5 times larger than the SH response. So this I can include. It. I can, uh, the empirical relations are also developed to predict the fundamental frequency of 2D and 3D basins in terms of lowest 1D fundamental frequency and using the shape ratio, what we, that is uh, width and the depth of that basin. And uh, what we observe that uh, a decrease in the fundamental frequency of a standard structure with the increase in the shape ratio is also observed. Uh, now we did what uh, used to say, we place that number of buildings over this. So we have taken three models in each, uh, like elliptical, rectangular, and trapezoidal. And in these also, we have considered what? We have considered uh, three models. First, in which only single structure is there. Second, in which nine structures are there. And third, in which 25 structures are there. So you can see that plan of a city comprising of 25 structures and we name it as A, B, C, D, E. In east-west, similarly in northwest, we have named as A, B, C, D, E. And we place these buildings over these basins like elliptical, rectangular, trapezoidal, as we can see in the above figure. Now we have computed their responses on each building in this array, means east-west and north-south, and we can see that in a single structure, this C1 EB means elliptical basin having only single structure C 
we have a very high amplitude compared to these like this a structure like this this is a c structure again this is a c structure we can see that it has reduced the maximum is 12.20 the maximum amplitude and it has reduced to 6.97 this plus and minus denotes the direction like uh, if it is in uh, positive direction means like in the east west array one is at the west another is the east so west may be a positive east may be a negative similarly here we can see that it has reduced up to half if we increase the number of building from 1 to 25 so this is observed similarly we can see in the rectangular basin and trapezoidal basin similar type of trends are there for us that building which we used to say c in the east west array similarly b it has 6.57 for a it is 4.77 again in the north south area the building is located like this this building in north south uh, this building b it is 6.18 and a this is this building having 5.15 so similar type of trend we can observe in elliptical rectangular and trap uh, this uh, trapezoidal basin and uh, we concluded that by increasing the number of structures we can reduce the total shaking of buildings like a if a single building is located it is uh, having a maximum amplitude of 12 11 and 12 and where we have placed 25 buildings the overall response of the building has reduced and it has reduced uh, in a in a very uh, noticeable manner like maximum we are getting is 6 and others we are getting 5 6 5 4 something we are getting like that so by increasing the number of structures we have reduced the total excitation of the structures similarly uh, we have done the f50 of these and we can say uh, we can see that at the particular frequency with the when a single structure is there it is up to 180 in the elliptical and when we placed nine buildings it has reduced up to 80 or something so it has reduced in a in a in a very drastically and similarly if we increased uh, this has been done for elliptical rectangular and trapezoidal in the east west array in the north south array for c building b building and b building similarly we we can see that how they are going to affects like uh, in this the fundamental frequency was uh, the fundamental frequency of that uh, basin is uh, 1.93 similarly that of structure is 1.93 both are in resonance and when we uh, simulate that the that the in the uh, 2d it is 1.90 and the maximum value was 1.75 and it has reduced uh in c for a 25 building up to 64 means that uh, spectral amplification also there is a reduction of at that particular frequency so what are the major outputs from this that the side seat interaction resulted in the reduction in the fundamental frequency also of the structure and uh, situated in the basin and this reduction increases with the increase in the number of structure for example it was 190 and when we have a 25 structure it has reduced to 1.79 we have nine structure it is 1.83 so that the decrease in fundamental frequency is also there second a very large amplification we have uh, uh, seen at the top of a stand alone structure in case of a double resonance phenomena and when we increase the number of building it has reduced up to 40% in 2d sci and up to 30% in 3d sci and also we have observed that splitting of frequency that splitting uh, is still not clear what is the reason uh, many um, scientists have reported in their past studies that that at uh, at uh, that uh, resonance frequency there is a splitting and uh, one uh, this uh, gugen only pointed out that this might be reason because of that torsion or we can say that rocking phenomenon at that base uh, at the uh, foundation of that building still uh, it is not clear what is the reason only he has pointed out something like that and also an increase of sci effects uh, on the response of building is there when the city density increases when we increase that uh, number of buildings which are closely spaced then this sci responses uh, further increases now uh, we come to a very uh, new scenario it was done in 2015 i think by colombi what he did uh, 
if we see the figure number B, so he placed two seismometers, S1 and S2. One is at a forest having multiple trees is there, and uh, uh, second as a plain ground. Well, that means no tree is there, only soil is there. Simple plain ground is there. So he uh, starting some uh, hampering there and recorded the noise at S1 and S2. What he find out that at S1 there is a certain reduction in the frequency. You can see that band gap, two band gap. One has is 40 and one of the other at the 100. In the frequency band gap FFT. He has observed. The point is that he has divided both the S1 divided by S2. S1 means that uh, response of a uh, seismograph at that forest and then there is at the plain ground and he found out there is a reduction. It is coming less than 1. We can see this. In the figure number C, it is less than 1 at two locations. One it is 40, one is at 100 and it is approximately reduced to 20%. Means 20% uh, there is an increase in the energy at that particular frequency. So why it is happening? So what he did, he first generated a relief wave using this FZ and what he did, he play, he modeled this forest. He take the average height, average width and uh, shear wave velocity of these trees, shear wave velocity of these uh, trees, density, their diameters and he modeled them and then again uh, place that uh, certain response. He has taken this uh, 10 to 130 Hz recurve wavelet and study uh, taken the response. He has also considered the ground properties like VP900, VS500 density uh, approximately 1200 kg per meter cube. And then he compare this experimental with the simulation. Having uh, and he find out that these fundamental frequencies messes with the longitudinal frequency of these trees. So, uh, by his paper, uh, something click in my mind that uh, if we generate a Rayleigh wave and instead of trees, if we place certain buildings having certain uh, height, certain frequency, because in this he has taken up to 130 Hz, but uh, for earthquake, we have frequency that are damaging up to 10 Hz only. Before, above that, uh, they are not much damaging because the resonance was not there. So. What we did, we did the same. But instead of taking the trees, we have placed the buildings. And we have taken the VP205, VS120, density 350. Similarly, for the soil, we have taken some properties like VP215, VS720, and density 1200 kg per meter cube. Now, there are two major uh, phenomena that is happening with this. The, this closely spaced buildings that is one is the Bragg scattering and second is the fan resonance and what they did we have compared the responses at their recording station the recording station we have kept after these buildings and we take different sizes of the building we take different height of the building we take different density we have uh, just uh, increase and decrease the number of buildings also and we have increase, uh, taken certain even we can say this uh, heights five buildings of certain height then other five buildings of certain height using that 30 buildings are placed to see how they are going to affect the response if really we pass through these buildings and what we observe we also observe that reductions and these reductions are up to particular frequencies that frequency matches with that of buildings so we come to some conclusions like uh, uh, the structures which are lying between the recording stations and the source, they can act as an insulator for the Rayleigh wave and they result in the decrease in the amplitude also due to this background and resonance scattering. Second, the reduction is more when this resonance scattering at a different flexor and longitudinal modes of vibrations are there. And we also observe that the reduction of amplitude of Rayleigh wave increases with the density and the number of structures and uh, the height and the width of the structure also affect that the amplitude of the Rayleigh wave. If this height and the width uh, changes, that amplitude of Rayleigh wave is also hampering. And at last we find out there is a reduction of 58 to 55% uh, with the presence of just 30 buildings if we take at the resonance of uh, uh, this uh, flexor resonance and longitudinal resonance. 
treatments. Overall, uh, these are very really helpful. Like uh, uh, if we talk about certain city, like Delhi, we can say. If we if we look at Delhi, the major of earthquakes used to take place in Himalayas because there is a fault is there. The two plates are uh, coinciding with each other. One is this Indiana plate, another is this Eurasian plate. These both are colliding each other, and they are the source of major earthquakes. And there are certain surface waves that can be generating and moving towards Delhi. So what we can do while planning that city or a small town, what we can do, we can place our buildings which are more uh, earthquake resistant, more uh, resistance is there. We can make them building more um, capable of handling this earthquake forces. And later the buildings, like 30 buildings are, are uh, what we can say, a layer of buildings can be developed around the buildings which are less uh, re uh, resistant. Like weak buildings are there at the center and uh, strong buildings can be placed all over it so that the that wave, the this uh, surface wave, it can be damped, reduced and become less damaging to the buildings which are located at the center or the later. So, the results can be recommended for the town planner, for the earthquake engineer to consider uh, the insulating effects of this urban environment for the seismic microization of a particular area. Now we come to a conclusion from the SCI uh, on the ground motion characteristics like number one, SCI effect is more on ground motion where there is a matching of the frequency of the building and the basin. When they are in resonance, they are more pronounced Second, the SCI effect generally causes decrease in ground motion level also. SCI effect increases with the increase in building density. Uh, the duration of the signal is also increases due to SCI. The ground motion at the boundary of the city increases due to this wave filtrated by the city. And last, the deflected waves caused by the building decrease the coherency of the ground motion. So this analysis allow inferring that a dense urban uh, urbanization should be generally a global beneficiary effect on seismic risk. The effects are much less pronounced in case of a heterogeneous non-periodic buildings uh, distributions in addition to uh, rise to a local increase in ground motion especially at the border of the homogeneous of the building box. Means if the buildings are of same type, same height, same type of construction is there then they are more beneficial for the seismic risk rather than a building which are heterogeneous, non-periodic or what the result, they can increase the ground motion at a particular location and decrease at certain location. That's why in the, in the, in the pictures which we have seen in the earlier, in the starting uh, slides, that certain buildings are standing and certain buildings are collapsed. So this SCI is one of the uh, common reason why that uh, locally certain increase in there in the ground motion and overall the responses are less. So these are some side effects which should be considered while designing our buildings. So these are certain my publications. Uh, I know that time is very limited and it is not possible to discuss all the things uh, which we have done in our research. But if we go through these papers, it might be helpful for you to understand the site city interaction and how they are going to affect and what type of so, studies, what type of uh, parameters we have considered uh, during our uh, simulations. Now, uh, at last, I would like to say thank you. Now, any doubt? Hey, any query you can ask with our expert. I know that topic is uh, really tough and very new and it's a challenge work but still uh, basic we can start. Right now uh, very few researchers are doing this SCI interactions uh, simulations. Uh, one team is in France and Grenoble, uh, one is at uh, this Chinese Jinping and uh, one is doing in America. Only I think three teams or four teams are there. In India, I have tried my best to do certain simulation or start this work in uh, India level, but uh, 
research is not uh, localized to certain countries, certain places. It's a global. If we do something here or we do something in France, or everyone came to know about that. Yeah, now we are open for any uh, discussion, for any uh, question, for any queries. You can ask your doubt if you are, if there are any, please. So I don't think there are any more queries. So we extend our heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Neeraj Kumar for graciously accepting our invitation and dedicating your valuable time to the ESTC on Geotechnics and Soil Structure Interaction organized by the Department of Civil Engineering at NIT Hamirpur. So the knowledge you gave of, about the dynamic site-city interaction and its impact on urban structure is undoubtedly an uh, invaluable addition to our knowledge, which will definitely help in our future. So once again, we express our profound appreciation to Dr. Kumar for sparing precious moments from your busy schedule to enlightening us. So, thank you immensely, Dr. Kumar. Uh, thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Dr. Maninda Singh, for giving us such an opportunity to have uh, to present my work, my research to all the members or the participants in your uh, uh, STC. Thank you, Dr. Maninda Singh.